Hello and welcome everyone to the LCS Challengers League presented by Subway. We're in best of fives as we find ourselves in the lower bracket semifinals. I'm Kangas and I'm joined by the one, the only, Joshi. And we're looking quite dapper today, I must say. I like, uh, like how we you are, clean up, man. You know, I wish I had a little bit more time to do the rest of it, but we got as far as we could with the five minutes before <laughs> the show and he that? told me. Huh. You know, I, I just remember seeing a message about five minutes like, hey, we're dressing up with this. I'm like, oh, God, that is not what I thought we were doing. <laughs> Hold on. We got to do a big, Josh, because it is best of fives right now. And that means that it's a completely different ballpark for a lot of the teams. The regular season was all best of threes, fearless draft. But now best of fives have changed things up. We'll talk a little bit more of what we've seen so far with fearless draft and best of fives. But before that, we want to remind everybody of some of the awards that we're going to be dishing out throughout this week and into next week. We have a lot of new ones to introduce. First off, All Pro. So, without further ado, let's throw it over to the second team, All Pro. Now, winning wouldn't mean just as much without second place. Announcing our second All Pro team, they are. We'll look at Kenby finding an ulti on the quad. Array dishing out tons of DPS. He flashes out of the Nexus Tower to take quad down. Sturdy's burning. He uses the ramp stance to try to escape, but Faisal's cooking him just like Supernova's cooking in this game, too. Oh, they got Ah, Perry did not stick with the team, and he will get punished for it. Young tries to save his jungler's life, and now he gets punished for it. Good knockup with the follow up from Kenby. Oh, the way ultimate's not going to be enough. As he lands another Sonic Wave, Kenby just cannot miss these. Chasing that boom flash forward, boom. Game strike will pick up that kill. Now back in here on to Manu. Wow. Ray gets that credit. 10 to 5, double the kills to Supernova. And it's now Zyko actually does go for it. Spyrax on the other side. He has such a good pop blossom angle. And now they're locked in here. Spyrax just needs to pull the trigger. And there he goes. Three man pop up. And that's the ulti. Oh, Make it rain, baby. And there's the wombo combo you were dreaming of. Doesn't matter if you don't believe in them. They believe in themselves. And Onat goes forward. The charm is there. The damage is found in AoE. They've done it. They've done it. A sturdy fight for his life. His life Wait, is have they? forfeit. Have they? And now Sajed, one last attempt. Samudo survives. They will cast stones at giants and watch them fall. The damage is area of effect. Oh no, I think they. But FlyQuest refused to be the fallen. As well as Shochi, who's uh, ramping up at the attack speed. Supernova feel. They can go straight for oh, this dragon. Kill yeah. out of position. Gets caught out. Final spark. Gonna meet. Romer gets caught as well. Wrong wow. spot to be. And just like that, Supernova grab two and answer kills. It's awesome to have more reason to celebrate the players and to show off more of the players. We have more reason than ever. So I want to give you the opportunity, Josh. Who's standing out for you on your second team All-Pro list? I, I think the biggest person here has to be Spyrax. As a player who I've everybody knew was going to be one of the strongest players in the league coming in. This player was on the verge. There were teams bidding for him to potentially bring him to the LCS. He said, no, yep. I want to go play with Maryville. But that is the level of play he has continued to show. You look at this squad, you look at this player, you know that he is ready to go back. And the other one here, Kang, is that we really have to give big props to is Sajed. He's a player yes. who nobody really knew before he had an opportunity to play here in Challengers League. And I feel like the comparisons to Masu has just looked for his opportunity to go play internationally in his first split in the LCS. Mm -hmm. We get to see Sajed following the same footsteps. He had some of the same issues with laning phase, but he's also showcasing that he has the power to get a pentakill even earlier this week. Yeah, Sajed has been the big standout performer for me because he's also a rookie coming in. Well, you and I actually caught some of the tryout games. Seems like Supernova, even Evil Genius is back where they were still with us. We're hosting public tryouts, and we got a chance to co-stream some of those. Sajed came out of nowhere. We did not know who this kid was, or at least I had no idea who this guy was until we saw some of the tape. And I got so excited to see him in the NACL off of just those tryouts, and he's absolutely delivering right now. So props to Sajed. It's tough to stand out as a rookie. Sometimes we see rookies coming and they pop off. Masu's one example, but more often than not, it takes some time for the rookies to warm up to this level of play, but he's definitely uh, kind of bucking that trend. On the opposite side of that, though, 
Kenvi, he's kind of had a resurgence here coming back down to the NACL, and we're seeing a return to kind of peak form Kenvi as well. And we know that Kenvi is a player who said that, yeah, my time with Immortals, I don't really count in a lot of ways because I didn't have the confidence to demand yeah. the attention from the rest of my team. But he comes back into Challengers League, he feels way more comfortable, and we are seeing the results because of it. Well, that's our second team all pro. Let us know in chat if you agree, if you disagree, if you think somebody was snubbed. I know some of the players from the third yeah, team all pro are already voicing some of yeah. their concerns. Yeah. Who do you think should be first, right? We're going to be revealing that. Ooh. I believe that's tomorrow, actually. Well, we get True. to see True. even more around. of who has done even better. <laughs> uh, but with that said, let's take a look at the updated bracket so we can catch up on what's been happening throughout the tournament so far. We are into best of fives, Josh. You see we're in the lower bracket right now, and we just had an incredible series between FlyQuest Challengers and TLC earlier, and uh, FlyQuest took it. They booked their tickets to the finals live at the Riot Games Arena on April 1st. So shout out to the FlyQuest Challengers team over there. As their LCS team also just earlier today booked their tickets to mm -hmm. MSI. So that org's just kind of popping off right now. But whoever wins this match today will be going up against TLC. What's the biggest surprise to you so far from the bracket? If we look at broad strokes, if we look at everything that happened so far in this spring tournament. I mean, you really have to look at the fact that Supernova got knocked out in two rounds, right? That is not <sighs> the heartbreak universe I think anybody was expecting to go to, but it has been Maryville and Supernova both getting early round upsets. Two teams that we had high expectations for, but we're not living up to them. And now those mm -hmm. two teams are in the top four. So we end up having two of the Challengers League teams, or two of the LCS affiliate teams matched up with a mm -hmm. team run by an influencer and a team that is <laughs> run by a college. And every single one of these teams deserves to be here. They have started picking things up at the right time. And I cannot wait. But the one thing we got to look at, King, is before we even go further is whoever wins today has to play again tomorrow. Maryville played yes. yesterday, so they would have to play three days in a row if they win today. That's a gauntlet. That's a gauntlet of games right there. And speaking of what we saw yesterday, best of five fearless draft. I want to get your thoughts on these two teams going into this because we have a whole season of best of three fearless draft. If anybody has been living under a rock, it means that if a champion's picked in the series, that team cannot play that champion again. Um, but best of fives means that we go even deeper into the champ pool. Do you think that that favors either Maryville or DSG going into this series? I have to say, I'm expecting it to ferry Mary Maryville going into this one. One of the things okay. that we always look at is how how deep are your champion pools? And the side of Maryville has showcased that they can play so many different things, where there are a couple of players on the side of Disguise who have not necessarily shown the same kind of breadth in champion pool that they have had, and that should definitely favor Maryville when you get to game four, game five, and suddenly the opposing mid laner is like, uh, guys, <laughs> what champion am I supposed <laughs> to play now? Yeah, what are we supposed to do at this point? Uh, I'm happy that you talk about the champ pool because Maryville University has shown incredible breadth of champ pool throughout the spring split so far. And when we look at the roster, this is not the roster we expected for Maryville going into the season. So we had them power ranked very low on initial lists. But this is the roster they've committed to, and they look fierce. I am confident to say this is the strongest ever collegiate team that we have ever seen in League of Legends. If you want to contest me on that on socials or in Twitch chat, feel free, but I'll defend that point. These guys are legitimate. They are the real deal. And you have to expect these guys to do just as well when it comes to the collegiate side of things, when they actually go to the top four. I don't think there's been a season since Maryville burst onto the scene where they were not favored to win the entire thing. But this is an opportunity right now for Maryville to win, not just in Collegiate, but also win the Challengers League. And it really comes off the fact that their bottom lane, Scary Jerry and Zyko, have taken yeah. off way beyond what anybody else was expecting from them last year. And imagine what they would be playing like if they didn't also have to go to class. <laughs> I just, I like, imagine a world that this is actually five players that can commit all their time to League of Legends. That is a scary thought. But let's look at the opposition because DSG have been making a redemption arc happen, Josh. The beginning of their spring split was atrocious. They lost so many series, barely picked up any games throughout the first half of the spring split. But they started to come back. We realized strength of schedule was really, really front-loaded for them. And now they're making a deep run here in playoffs, getting into top four. They are the defending champs. Again, only Young being the returning member. What do we think about DSG in their current form? 
Disguise was a bit of a surprise to me, right? How much they struggle, but now that they've come together, I think the biggest players that we have to give credit to for this resurgence is actually their bot lane as well. Manui and Poom were instrumental the last yep. time these two teams played up against each other, and we got to see that Manui was a player that I feel like a lot of people had almost written off as like, oh yeah, he's going to play some enchanters, he's going to play the Ziggs, he's going to be a supportive member of the team, but this has been a playoffs where he has showcased that he can be a major carry threat as well, and he will need to continue that if they want to go up against the most dominant bot lane in the entire league. Absolute mountain for DSG to continue to climb, but a reminder, they did win that first series against MU in round one of playoffs. This is also MU's chance to get some revenge for getting that upset loss and being put into that lower bracket and have to make their deep run. A reminder though, DSG, they were live at finals last year in summer, and so can you. Tickets are only $5. They are live right now, so go check out Path to LCS on Twitter. You can find the link to purchase them. We'd love to have you in the arena. Josh, I think you plan on being there. I plan on oh, being I'll there, plan too. I plan on being there. Yeah, you know. Yeah. We'll have an opportunity. We'll see if there's any more tables to throw you through, but there is still <laughs> lots of cool things that we will have opportunities have to do. For that one. You know, we can, we can, I, I can make a bad table. You bring some you chairs. Really need one. <laughs> you bring some chairs for sure. All right. Well, we are into game one draft, so let's start focusing up on this. I'm going to be very interested to see how these teams pivot for a best of five fearless. That's something that we're going to keep our eyes on very closely. But for game number one, it seems to be focused on some of the power picks in the meta right now. Callista Varus, Talia has been insane, as well as Renekton, very blindable. And we have seen teams on blue side be willing to just lock that in early. And not a lot of surprises coming through here. It does say a lot to yeah. me that Disguise are banning both the Varus and the Callista going into this one because they do not want to give Scary Jerry an opportunity to pick it. The Varus is something we have seen a lot of Manui play, but the Callista has been something where I'm not as convinced of at all. And this Senna makes a lot more sense. Still one of the strongest champions on mm. the patch. It has so many tools, has so many things that can be paired with, but both teams currently threatening to lock the Aatrox. You have to be judicious in Fearless Draft. You have to recognize they can only play a champion once, and both of them choosing to pick up 80 carries instead. Oh, we didn't go Tom Kench. I was heavily predicting a Tom Kench because once the Senna's locked in, you can't play Senna again through the series. If Tom Kench is taken, that means you never get the Senna-Tom Kench combo. We have seen other things rise in popularity like Senna Nautilus as well. So maybe not the end of the world. MUR are prioritizing instead engage option with that Rel. But I'm surprised still that they didn't go for that. Either way, Jinx for Scary Jerry. He has been able to take over and explode games with this champ. Yeah. And I think this is fascinating, right? Disguise do not want to put all of their eggs in this game one basket. A lot of players would have just picked Orianna. If this was the LCS, FlyQuest pick Orianna every single game, and it got them a lot of wins. <laughs> so we'll end up seeing exactly how Disguise will choose to go about this one, because like you said, the Senna can pair with Tom Kench. It is a very strong pairing, but it's not the only thing that you can play it with. And now Disguise have picked a very strong backline for themselves with some tools to hit things from a long range at the same time. So Maryville, they need to come up with a way to either win the front to back or have more opportunity to attack Disguise backline. And with this Rel, you're actually very flexible with which direction you want to go. True, and also where you want to put the Rel in your draft. It still can be played in the jungle if you really want to. They're going to hold that till the last moment as they lock in Rumble here. So that is going to be a blind top laner, presumably, and then they can ban out some of Tenacity's top lane champions. This is an interesting pivot. I expected, again, to focus more on the supports that you would pair with Senna. You could just go Tom Kench and Nautilus right here, force them onto something that falls a little bit below priorities. Um, but no, different strat for MU. They are not afraid of this Senna lane in the slightest. Yeah, and I think it's worth noting that Rumble doesn't have a lot of strong counters in the top lane right now. Aatrox has been one that has been very popular. We saw Philip play Scion into it yesterday, and it really becomes a situation where you're trying to not lose the early laning phase. Now, it is worth noting that Niles likes to go teleport on his Rumble a lot more than most other Rumble players in order to play the map a little bit better, but it is a situation where Maryville can create a lot of pressure, and if you put a front-to-back team on the back foot by putting them behind in gold, you have a lot more tools and they're trying to protect this Rumble pickup in the top side in order to really yeah. make the backline feel uncomfortable. Really taking away the champions that Tenacity would want to play into it, but Tenacity has a deep champ pool as well, and Tenacity was the biggest difference maker in the last series. Welcome all the LCS viewers, by the way, from the raid. If you weren't watching earlier on at NACL playoffs, round one! Best of threes, DSG surprise upsetted MU, and it was off of the back of Tenacity having incredible carry performances. So honestly, this kind of feels like MU given a lot of respect. They took away his Renekton and Gragas, which popped off in that series. They take away the Aatrox and the Cassante. 
He will still get counterpicked. So what else does Tenacity have in the tank? Well, we'll get to see. I'm surprised as well that Maryville choosing to pick the Ari now. Ari is one of these characters that is a bit more of a tech piece, a bit more of a counter pick than it is necessarily something mm. aggressive. But because they picked it semi blind, the way it can be flexed into either the support role or the mid lane, it feels as though Young has sprung the trap. They're bringing the Nico out right now in order to have a lot of tools to lock down the Ari. Ari relies so much on her ability to be mobile, and you have Ooh. the tools to lock her down in disguise. This is a huge pivot across the board, right? As the Yona comes through suddenly you have a champion that does really work well into rumble and in particular will outscale him we look at the combo now. of this composition they can blow up that rumble but Xin Zhao held to the last so it's rel pivoted to support and then Xin Zhao is the final pick for mu i'm a little bit shocked that the Xin Zhao huh. comes out now of course it's a very strong champion but you're going up against enough melee DPS starts on the side of Disguise that you're not necessarily going to benefit as much from the Crescent Guard as you would in some other compositions. But Maryville yeah. are confident they want to come out swinging. If you can find this first win, you have a lot more tools in order to force Disguise into uncomfortable situations. This first step on the road to Team Liquid. One cool thing I've seen with the Xin Zhao Nico interaction in particular is that you see the Nico ultimate right before it's going off. If you save your Crescent Guard, you can actually knock her away so you deny the engage onto your team. So in that regard, I do like it, but you're right. The Yone and the Vi are going to be on top of you. <laughs> so yeah. that's going to be a little tough. You got to get through that damage as well. Uh, something tells me that this might be a tankier Xin Zhao rather than a full damage. Uh, you know, DPS version of the build. But I like the Hui Sun of bot lane. I think that MU probably identified that that's what was going to happen to bot lane. So that's also why they pivoted to the top bands. Interesting draft for game one. It will only get more interesting as we get throughout this best of five fearless draft series. But we're into game one for DSG versus MU. I do want to point out yet again that Niles has chosen to go for the teleport. And as is Dance tradition battle. in Niles' games, we see Let's a go. lot of dance-offs happening up here in the top flight. It's something that Niles in particular seems to be calling for, and they just hang what out is, up in the top side. What is what? Yone doing? That's not a he's, dance. Is he he's playing, playing like a violin with his sword? Yeah. Wait, is this news to you? This character's been out for a long time. Steve. I've never seen that taunt before, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, if you have Yone and Yasuo dance right next to each other, they actually play a song together with the flute and the <gasps> violin. Or, wow. I don't remember exactly what that instrument's called. Also, for everybody who calls it Yone, I hate you. <laughs> Man, the depth of champion design and in interactions uh, is definitely something that's lost on me, but something I also respect. Also, let us know in chat oh, who you're rooting for. Spam DSG if you believe in disguise. Spam MU if you believe in the best ever collegiate team. DSG are still trying to make their redemption arc continue. They had a very rough spring split. But if they can continue to win out here in playoffs, they could get back-to-back -back finals appearances and a potential back-to-back -back championship for Young, who is the only returning member. Now put on the Nico here, the counter pick into the Ari. Maybe a little pressure as well on this player, who I honestly has kind of felt like a rock for the team. Even when they were having that rough early start to spring, Young was one of the players that I identified as being somebody who was consistently playing at a pretty high level. Yeah, it definitely felt as though there were some issues that Disguise had early on in the season where they weren't necessarily trusting each other a lot. Whereas Maryville, they we're not missing a beat because they would always trust each other. Whenever something would happen, yep. everybody on Maryville were on the same page. Whereas Disguise, it's taken them a lot more time to find themselves in that position where they can actually go for plays all at the same time. We have to give a lot of credit over to their coaching staff for that one as well. What is it? Uh, check it to the, pay it to the game? Check it to the game? I have no idea what you're referencing. Ah, that's one of the things that Don Jake always says. Ah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, still don't get the reference. It's all right. We'll see if Perry's able to get anything done mid, though. Still hovering here. Now, I'm just going to drop a ward down. Spot out if Yuji looks for any of his own ganks, as it's been a fairly slow start to game number one here. I want to start to set expectations for the compositions now, Josh. We've had some time to dissect, you know, what the stakes are for the players, but what do we expect to happen based on all the lane states, all the jungle interactions, who do we favor at what point in the game? Well, one of the big things uh, about Maryville that they like to do is their first game plan is always get Pryo in the bottom lane and allow Yuji to go for invades. They do have a lot of tools to try and do that right now because Jinx can burn her mana in order to get this push. They are pushing in, but they don't have any real opportunities to go for anything early on. The only real opportunity for ganks then is Perry going towards the top side where he can work with Tenacity to try and take down Niles. But because Niles has the teleport, it's nowhere near as threatening. 
happening. And so anything that we see early on is really just kind of, I don't want to say lucky because it's clearly a plan, but it's just a bonus on what you're already trying to do. This is definitely a game where we should start expecting explosions in the mid game. I, the pathing for Perry is unique because he starts spot side, goes top. Yuji's actually spotted on that one ward. There'll be nothing to steal away, so Yuji will have that information. But with a Xin Zhao and a Rel, I also wonder, maybe they could have just looked for a dive bot side. If Perry's pathing top, then that means that there's no jungle interaction. And uh, Hui, Senna, not necessarily two champions known for being able to absorb a dive early on. But don't go for that play instead. Junglers are just going for their full clears and having a pretty low interaction uh, style yeah. of early game jungling. Yeah, uh, we definitely would have needed to see Yuji decide that he wants to go for that dive earlier on. You do generally have to skip a oh. campus in jail, but Scary Jerry in trouble. Interesting situation Scary Jerry finds himself in. We'll get hit by the root and the maw. Should be fine to not burn flash here, just the ghost and run away. But I like that look from Poom, looking for action early. Yeah, really cheeky, and we already saw Scary Jerry go for a reset in order to try and get that uh, extra dagger and boots to come through but now that he has to reset again he's going to end up losing more exp and he's actually going to be falling fairly far behind manui and poom in this game because of that he's going to be missing out on several mm -hmm. melee minions several caster minions and so it does mean that manui and poom will be hitting level six relatively quickly compared to their opponents on the other side and with the ability for poom and manui to affect the rest of the map you know that these centers love moving towards the top side they love playing in the mid lane yeah. in order to help out their other solo laners. I will say, as Grubs have spawned, though, it doesn't look like they're playing for topside. They're actually playing for the dragon. Yeah, Perry just goes right for Volt Breakers over. They have Pryo bot. They do not have Pryo top. So they're going to, instead of what we've seen in the past, where Senna's will leave lane, go up to get the souls at the Grubs, they're instead going to use the Pryo bot. But hmm. Yuji's in the area. Zyko and Scary Jerry are walking up. Harry does not know that Yuji's on this side, and will actually start duking it out with him. Young's got the earlier roam from mid, but now MU could be pincered here in the river. I knew he's trying to corral them, but I think that DSG, but they weren't confident enough. It felt like they might have actually had a window there. Pooh went for the reset. If he had just stayed on the map, that would have been a really good uh, setup for yeah, DSG on the dragon. Six. Are they going to go for the steal? No! MU just say we're pulling the trigger! Oh, nice. Teleporting down, they're going to try and collapse here. Perry in a lot of trouble. First blood picked up, but it's answered right on back. Scary nice. Jerry getting one here, and now they're looking at him anew. It's going to be more kills to MU. They teleported down, not even going to help out too much here as Niles threw down the ultimate. Yuji fighting in the river still <laughs> against Young. No way! He's still alive! Double kill the Spyrax. Yuji's just trying to buy time for the team to back him up. Won't quite make it there in time as Young will get out of there. Two to three in the overall kill trade. An explosive early game. This is way earlier than I was expecting anything to happen, but we get to see Niles come down with the ultimate, and it ends up being a bit of an equal trade overall with all the gold going between different players. But we see Maryville commits very heavily to this, and because Niles teleports mm. so early, he and Spyrax perfectly layered their abilities. And Nui takes an entire equalizer yeah. here, right? The charm keeps him there. He very quickly decides, yeah, there's not a whole lot more I can do. To Yuji's credit, he does get the dragon, and now he's going to try and contest these grubs. Cool guys, don't look at explosions, Josh. He drops the ult leaves. Now Yuji fighting at the grubs here. Great call from Tenacity, trying to look for a lot of damage. Double knock up on a Spyrax. Zyko, Tenacity, making magic happen right now as MU will take down one member, but they lose more in return. DSG fighting this Fantastic right now off of the back of their top laner. This Yone, not necessarily known for being a super early game scrappy champion, but he's flashing over the wall looking for Niles, and Niles has got on the wrong side of the rift here, so surely he's going down. No flash available anymore. Tenacity got the damage on his own right now. Although, Niles is playing pretty cheeky here. He's looking to see if he can get the kill onto Young, and Young instead gets the kill credit. Good stuff coming over to Disguise. They end up coming out ahead of that one. And with all these trades back and forth, you are starting to see that Tenacity, because he stayed in the top lane earlier on, is getting more levels, is getting more gold in this game. But we get to see this game, or this fight, suddenly becomes very chaotic. It's a lot of fights with no ultimates on either side. And that's a situation where the Yone is going to thrive. He's a character that really loves taking all these long fights. And Disguise get exactly the kind of fight that they want here. They end up coming out with a couple of extra kills and I love the fact that Young is willing to step back up saying hey you're overheated you don't have flash as soon as Tenacity mm -hmm. gets on top of you you're not gonna be able to do anything and you can tell Niles is trying to dance around see if he can get any damage on top of him but Young got his dancing shoes on now we're back to live a clay a bot side Zeko gets flash 
out of Manui. So DSG's bot laner is going to have to play a little more carefully now. But I just, I love that Young's showing up early here. The only returning member from that championship run in Summer Split. And again, a consistent performer throughout all the spring so far. Yeah, and he and Spyrex, this is kind of similar. It reminds me of the finals that Disguise played in last time around as an ultimate goes out for Manui. A lot of damage on the Zyko. I don't know if there's going to be a kill angle here. And now Yuji's around. Remember, Minui does not have that flash available. But they get back to the turret, so DSG's bot lane is fine. This is yet another gank coming through from the side of Maryville. We had Spyrax come down. He blew his ultimate just to try and get the fight off. And now Tenaz is in trouble. Yeah, Tenaz or Niles is just going to go for the wave. Says, yeah, there's no way I'm getting out of this one. I'll at least try and cash in on as much gold and pressure as I can. Tenacity, though, gets this kill. And Disguise, they are weathering the storm in the bottom lane and also creating a storm up in the top side all at the same time. Disguise are looking so, so good. They're recognizing the game plan of Maryville. There's an over-indexing from Maryville sometimes in the bottom side of the map, and Manui and Poom are not dying to any of these plays, and that is so good for this side of the map. Now we got to turn towards the mid lane where we were looking at, uh, I was saying that Young versus Spyrex feels a lot like Young versus Ryoma in the finals last time. We were not expecting Young to necessarily be able to win that, but he was able to dominate that matchup, and he's already in a position now where he can potentially carry his team to another opportunity in finals. Got that counter pick in mid lane, about even in CS. But to Spyrex's credit, he's also cashing in on a lot of kills here. As they'll scrap a little bit with each other here in the mid lane. But I'm just so happy with how DSG's turned around their season. If we go back to spring and their really sloppy games that started off 2024, it was Minui and Poom, you know, struggling in bot lane and then the solo lanes not being able to compensate. Fast forward to now, and it's the complete opposite. Like you just said, Manui Poom holding the line. They're not getting Giga, you know, put in the dirt <laughs> by Scary Jerry Zyko, who have been doing that to a lot of other 2v2 lanes. And Tenacity and Young are stepping up and popping off right now. Perry's being this facilitative jungler that's just able to throw himself in and set up the other players to have these highlight reel moments. So DSG, they've really found their stride here in playoffs. And now with 20 seconds left until the next dragon, Maryville was able to pick up the first one, but this is a time when Disguise were supposed to be very, very strong with all of their different characters. They're having their ults come back up. Young has his ultimate and his flash and the rocket belt ready all at the same time. Disguise has mm -hmm. the tools to set up for this dragon, but they're going to be getting their second as Maryville is already setting up and looking to pick someone as they rotate. Maryville, after that first dragon scrap, they did also walk away with that dragon. So if they can keep stacking these, it feels great for them. DSG have a couple members around. They're going to have to watch for this Ari flank, but Tenacity's walking down because he doesn't have TP. Niles oh. does, and here's the flash engage from DSG. Massive pop blossom from Young on everybody. Perry set it up. Young knocked them down. DSG get the dragon. And now Tenacity even looks for more on the Spyrex. Throws Ooh, out the fade shield. Spyrex dodges it now. Yuji's on top of him. Tenacity's in trouble. Shut down for Spyrex. And it ends up being a dragon going over to Disguise, but yeah, Tenacity, a little too big for his britches, ends up going down to Spyrex as he tries to pick him off, hold him there for the rest of the team. But like you called out, Young coming up big yet again. This is the crowd control combination that Disguise have so much access to. They absolutely destroy Scary Jerry in that play, and they get the dragon easily off of that. Now Zyko trying to find something on the bottom side. There is a teleport he can ward. Set it up. Still no flash on Manui. Flashes in. Gravity Storm down. Manui stunned up. Trying to get damage down, but Scary Jerry can chase him in. Teleport coming down. Manui's dead. Scary Jerry gets excited. Can Spyrex land a charm? If you hit Poom. Oh, tried to predict the flash. Almost got it. I mean, credit to Poom for getting out of that one. But Maryville, once again, we're seeing this indexing towards the bottom side of the map. We'll take another look at this replay. Like you called out, Young, Mizell calls this the death wall because there are so many easy opportunities <laughs> to jump over. We see exactly how that works out this time around. Scary Jerry had no options in that last fight, just dies. And the Tenacity, I mean, he just ulted, doesn't have access to the Flash, and as soon as UG joins, there's too much damage for Tenacity to deal with. And so, we'll see, he might be in trouble again. Yeah, back to live. He has to flash away instantly. Tenacity had a fantastic first uh, scrap around the initial grubs. Struggle there and the dragon rotation, but they will get more. This is all six grubs to DSG Grub plus again. a dragon to their name. So uh, grub again, as we have dubbed it here in the NACL. DSG still having a pretty firm lead in this early game, but MU, they're a scrappy team. I mean, they're going to keep fighting DSG no matter what. We know oh, that for about sure. them.
But the big thing is they're starting to lose the thread a little bit, right? Because they are spending so much time down here on the bottom lane. Niles up on the top side. Uh, well, he was the third all pro. We have to say that Tenacity has been a better laner throughout this entire split and looking for opportunities to take him down. This is a matchup that's supposed to get better for Tenacity as time goes on, and they got to stop it now. They're heavily focusing this Yone. Niles says, hey, remember that time that your jungler showed up? Well, now I got a friend here. Fate Seal goes out. Tenacity's trying to take down Yuji in the 1v2 and almost slays him. The help of the Dawning Shadow from Poom almost was enough for DSG to trade one for one, but MU will get the top later. Yeah, and they really needed to shut this guy down. Tenacity will have so much split push power, so much playmaking ability later on in the game as Poom and Zyko find each other. Should just walk away with a bit of damage trade. But Maryville... They're still down about 500 gold. Does the player get they... out here? Oh, oh yeah, he's totally fine. The player that you really need to look at right now for Maryville is Spyrax. Not only is he going to be the one who has a lot of mobility and playmaking. Ooh, Poom! Oh, Spyrax, wait go. a minute! He just committed to the play for a moment. I thought Poom was out of there because he dodged the charm, but Spyrax says, nah, nah, you nah. don't get to do that to me. That's fantastic. As soon as we start talking about it, we see Spyrax get this play, and now... Young is going for the same thing. Pop Blossom from the shadows from out of nowhere. Yuji goes down and Young's unstoppable. This entire game is just back and forth, back and forth. We are at 18 kills and 14 minutes here, King, as both these teams are here to play. And I love the look from both these mid laners. As soon as Spyrex makes a play, Young goes for one on the other side. And now, with this mm -hmm. Rip Herald going down, Maryville, they do not have the jungler in position to try and contest it at all. And they're not even setting up for something on the other side of the map. This is normally where the counter punch comes through. And Maryville is not ready. Their feet are not planted. Maryville, the reason they were able to get so many wins, actually I might get back to that, is Zyko is positioned here for a potential engage, but there's nobody else around, so him and Niles won't be enough. They'll just catch the wave. One of the strengths of Maryville early on in the spring split was the fact that they had synergy already built. It felt like coming into the spring split, they were out macroing most other teams, and they just had this innate 5v5 sense of how they wanted to play the game. DSG did not have that did not, <laughs> at nope. the beginning of spring split. But it feels like DSG are catching up and Maryville no longer have that innate advantage. We'll see if Maryville can try and push that through. This game has been a lot of individual plays coming out from Spyrex and his RA was fearsome last game. The charm does go wide this time. But Spyrex is also going to be scaling very well. He will have a lot of ability to choose his targets during the later game fights. But the one player that we kind of set up that we haven't we talked about nearly as much this game here, King, is, is Scary Jerry, is yet to come online. He's got the first item completed, and Jinx really starts to take off when you have that second item done. And it's going to be Spyrex who's going to be setting Scary Jerry up for all these resets. And has so far had a quiet 2-1-2 game, all things considered. We haven't seen like a huge Jinx pop-off moment yet. Once you get that second item is when I think the Jinx starts to come up more online. But yeah, we'll keep our eyes on Scary Jerry. It's tough to play into the Vi, into the Yone, into the Nico as well. Not an easy Jinx game, all things considered. So how will Scary Jerry try and weather the storm? We saw already the combo take him out at that one dragon fight, but they will get the next dragon uncontested. Does not look like DSG are set up to take this. No, I'm actually curious what disguised uh, communications were like about this dragon. And also, Poom, that is not a safe place for him to be. He is all by himself. Oh no, that's Young. He's totally fine. Just kidding, I got yep. fooled. <laughs> hey, Nico things, man. Nico Happens things. to me all the time. All right. Yeah. Well, Perry, instead of going for the dragon, opted for top jungle clear. So he takes away the raptor, takes away the Krugs, and helps hover tenacity to take a turret. So all things considered, they still have that herald in their pocket. They get a neutral objective regardless on the map. It's not the end of the world that they give up that dragon. I still like that they are getting that counter punch, which we saw MU not able to accomplish for the previous herald play. So DSG overall are playing a pretty clean macro game, and they find themselves with close to a 2k gold lead. And this is one of the things that we have seen from Maryville, that they have been picking apart a lot of teams. They tend to play in the jungle very, very heavily, right? They are very ready to move between lanes very quickly, and they really bait out a lot of teams who try and defend, but they try and defend the wrong way, or, or they will defend too slowly, they'll be down tempo, and then suddenly Maryville is able to just nickel and dime your turrets. They'll take a quarter of a turret here, you know, a third of a turret there, and it will build them up these leads massively. But the Skies, they're committing to the other side, and they're just going. Ooh, flash from Zyko, look for the crash down. But an instant okay. fear from Minui will prevent that. 
Equalizer doesn't kill Poom. He's just low on health, but does have to burn the flash. Now, MU making another play here onto Tenacity. Probably thought he was safe because there were so many people mid. Now they're teleporting in. Fade Sealed goes through, but he's going to go right on back to that point on the three members of Maryville University, and they'll gladly pick up the kill. I love that from Spires, right? Waiting for the rest of his team to be ready. They know Tenacity has to go back, and now the play is coming mid lane. Maws don't land onto Scary Jerry. He's got to be careful, though. Cease and Desist is available for Perry. Zyko's here as your only backup. Now more members are coming in, and Cease and Desist onto the AD carry. The Jinx in trouble. The Jinx under the turret, but the turret ain't there anymore. Yuji showed up too late. They've already lost two members, plus the structure. Maybe Spyrex is enough to turn it, but now Young's joined in. MU in full retreat. Ooh, that was a rough series of plays, but Young wants a little bit more. Flashes. Rocket Belts doesn't get onto Spyrex. The last bit of flash distance from Spyrex will keep him alive. But Disguise still trades up there. They get the kills and the structure, right? The kill on Tenacity is nice, but there's no change in the map state because of it. Now Perry sticking around. Might be fighting up a bit more than he can chew. Next flash from Zyko. Thought he would knock up the enemy jungler. Cannot body block the Vault Breaker. I liked the look there from Zyko. Trying to keep Perry on one side of the wall. At least get the flash out of him, but Perry's out of there. Yeah. But as we take another look at this, you gotta kinda ask what the plan is here for Maryville, right? Zyko chooses to go in, but this turret is already nearly dead. The Grubs are doing so much work, and even though the ultimate from Poom misses Scary Jerry, there's just enough damage, and then they go in one by one by one, and it just means that so many members of Maryville end up going down in this last play, and it feels like that confidence might be biting them a little bit as they try and make plays that they have no business going for. Yeah, Zyko with a bit of an oopsie there on that engage. I want to give props to Young, though, controlling the Nico clone to uh, eat up the charm coming out from Spyrax. A little bit of micro play coming through here from the returning champion, a player that uh, th there was questions about going into Summer Finals, like you had alluded to earlier. Can he step up to Ryoma? Does he actually have it in him? And he had an incredible series then. He's having an incredible spring split now. So happy with Young's growth as a player. <laughs> Spyrax is probably the most fed Ari I've seen, missing the most charm so far this game. Hate to call him out on it, but <laughs> these are going a little wide so far. It's all right. You know, you just need to land the important ones. That one wasn't important. So True. now Maryville is trying to set up because you do have to be a little bit worried about Disguised. Uh, if Tenacity is around, they do actually do the Baron relatively quickly. But this is the position where Disguised are trying to set things up. And one of the things that I have credited Maryville on is their ability to go for flanks, but they're getting attacked. They're just owning this jungle. You said it yourself. The jungle does not belong to Maryville University when Perry's down the enemy team. Zyko will look for an engage. Big equalizer will roast up Manui and Perry. Now MU oh. have a 4v5. That charm landed. Not enough to assassinate Young. DSG have low health bars, but all five members continue to stand. But it's still enough damage to make sure that they... Ooh, they're gonna go for it anyway. Niles is still around. Spyrex is already backed off. Scary That's Jerry. All, ults. all ultimates used. They have the Senna sustained. They can teleport Tenacity back into this one. Actually, Young's going to be the one teleporting back in. Tenacity's already full health, so MU will try and catch Young as he lands in here. But he gets out of there. Now, Niles is in trouble. MU have overextended, trying to get the kill onto the Nico, but Young outplayed them all. Manui picks up the kill, and they didn't even de-aggro Baron. DSG with an incredible play. Spax his ultimate back up. This could be their option here. to try and do something. Yuji can look for the smite seal. I don't think DSG can keep going for this. The Yuji's charm. in there. He's onto Tenacity. Spyrex gets the kill. Goes on the rampage. Yuji takes out Perry. And it's now disaster for DSG. They took too long on the Baron. And MU say thanks for the leash. The Baron goes over to Maryville. And it's a huge play right now for the Rally Cry Baron buff. Three minutes. They're already up one and a half thousand gold off that play. They can get their third dragon. They can open up the map. And even though this starting play from Maryville looked a little bit all over the place they just were buying mm. time even though they kept the baron leash it just meant that so much damage was going through it and spyrex lands the charms Ooh. that matter taking down poom immediately and then getting parry there's no smite there's no ultimates left on the side of disguise and that means so much gold is going back in the pockets of maryville they're mm. still down about a thousand but as soon as mid lane turret goes down that is a huge opportunity for maryville to start allowing spyrex to kill everybody on the map and another little moment right there. Tenacity jumped out as Perry jumped back in. I think a split call from the jungler and top laner of DSG. Right as I was praising the synergy the team's built up, we're seeing some echoes of the struggles they had earlier in spring. It's not beyond recoverable. They now have to fight for that dragon soul, and they're going to have to absorb a barren push from MU. But they still have a bit of a gold lead. So don't count DSG out yet, but those types of moments, 
Uh, it's a little concerning to see early on here in game one. Yeah, I honestly think both these teams also scale very similarly in terms of power, but they do it in very different ways, right? Maryville is very reliant on getting these resets. They need to get that first kill, whereas these guys are very happy to take long, long fights where you know, if you remove the ultimates from all of these characters, it would actually be Disguise who have a very strong position to play in because they remove the ability for Maryville to make plays. But Disguise, they also need to be in a position where they are ready to set things up. They're a team composition that relies a bit more on positioning, whereas Maryville are a bit more scrappy or very happy to take chaotic fights like the last one. And, yeah, and they're willing to do stuff like this. They make action happen even if there's nothing on the map. They're just jumping onto Tenacity, who's in a side lane. Three members of MU here. A lot of players would say, why is this happening? There's no Dragon, there's no Baron, but MU say, we're a team that likes to make action happen, so we're going to make action happen. If we see anybody out of position, we pull the trigger. Yeah, and we have to say this is also the third, maybe fourth time that Tenacity has gotten caught out in these side lanes over pushing yeah. because the rest of his team isn't creating pressure that he is able to safely push up for. This was something that he used to be very good at when he was on 100 Thieves where he was able to go for these plays and create the pressure and draw people, but he was also living them. That was the crucial difference. He and Jimmy would live in these situations, whereas now Maryville trying to force a dive here in the mid lane. Nui has no flash available from the earlier plays. Spyrax misses another charm, gets rooted in place, but the turret goes down. They still got onto Manui. Zyko with the re-engage. Oh. One for one trade. Spyrax goes down for Manui, but Young with the pop blossom. Young's doing so much damage. Boom's free firing as well. And Isle says, nah, I don't want that fight. I'm just going to back as I watch my team die. DSG absorb the dive. Mid lane turret goes down, but that is Maryville. They're losing the Baron buff on everybody. It's timed out, and now Disguise are going to swing right on back. They had a great fight around the Baron, but that one was a bit of a disaster. We were talking yeah. about how Spyrex needs to lend the important charms. That charm that he was looking for on Minui and Poom was important, ends up going wide, and then he dies and gives a massive shutdown over to the Senna at the same time. Disguise, they're not just taking the mid lane turret. They're going to be able to take the top lane turret because Grub again means this turret is not long for this world. They kill these so fast. And going back to that other play, if we get a chance for a replay, I want to watch Manui's reaction time. Very impressive how quickly he's able to react to Spyrex jumping over that wall. It's sealed from Tenacity to get away from Niles and Zyko. And they're even teleporting up Manui. ESG, they read that MU are sharks in the water trying to hunt for the top laner. This time around, they back him up. <laughs> they say, Tenacity, we will not leave you out to dry for a fifth time. Still, Maryville, as they go for this last play, you were talking Watch about Minui. the reaction speed from Minui. Charm goes out, and Bam. he does not flinch. Minui not flinching at all. Admittedly, he doesn't have... I don't know if he had the flash at the time, but it was definitely a Minui flash Minui did predict. not have flash at this time, no. All right. But also, as we looked at it again, he didn't have to sidestep that far <laughs> for True. that charm. But still, still. impressive stuff. Yeah, and because both Minui and Poom not really under that much threat, Minui does end up going down, but it does mean that Tenacity, Young, Perry, they all have the freedom to choose who they want. But still, Maryville, the reason why we don't have objective bounties and have not is largely due to the fact that Maryville has had dragons this game. They are now one dragon away with 40 seconds coming through. We haven't yet seen Scary Jerry come online. They still have all the same win conditions. We're looking for Zyko. He's all right. Throw out the root right there. It's so hard for Maryville to fight into this dragon. They got 30 seconds to catch his mid wave, but DSG have a choke point, and Maryville will have to fight through it. DSG will hit the wave as well. They're taking a lot of poke damage for free, basically. Equalizer mm. goes down. Tenacity down to below half health with no teleport available. So DSG's top laner is going to have to play this next dragon fight very safe. Yeah, Spyrex's ultimate will be up relatively Ooh. quickly, but Niles will not have it back in the same amount of time. So Maryville, they got to try and find some way to get back in. And Tenacity is basically full health again. It definitely yeah, kills off the Grump. This guy's have bots, one out on this. It bought space for MU to be able to walk into the river, but they didn't walk in confidently enough because of that death wall that you were talking about earlier. They still don't have any vision up there, save the one on the wrong side of the buff. So instead, they'll walk the wave in mid. Do not go for the dragon fight. That would have been their soul, but they'll be happy to just get the gold here from this turret. I still favor DSG in this trade. 
Yeah, the dragon comes through, denies Hexex Soul, and now we see Marivel. They're also in a position where they could have potentially gone for the Baron if they knew that everybody had recalled, but not going to be able to do that one. It is still a situation where Maryville is just a stone's throw away. Their win condition is still up, and now Scary Jerry has three items completed. It, this game is so tense between these two teams. You know yeah. that whoever makes a single mistake will very rapidly lose the game and both mid laners have such massive tools to be the ones that both make the mistake but also to make the play they can both win their team the game and it just comes down on how they position how they throw out these ultimates and set up everyone else it feels like spyrex versus young is oh. the contest as mu commit to and engage onto the clone see it's not just us it's the players too yep. Hey, it happens to everybody. But that is Gravity Storm from Zyko, so no ultimate on the rel if there is a Baron fight. DSG, if they're tracking that, they should feel a little more confident here. But I'm happy you highlight those mid laners. Young hasn't even died yet. Six, zero, and six. Spyrex, seven, two, and three on the Ari. These two seem to be the main characters of game one. You have to remember that Spyrex can also just make those plays kind of whenever they want. And that's a teleport Ooh. come through from Tenacity. The very quick yeah, switcheroo. What's you doing down here? Yeah, they were they're, they're positioned on the bottom side of the jungle. They'll throw out the Jinx rocket. They should know that this is happening, but look at Young. He's going to catch Yuji right now. Not a lot of damage. Doesn't full commit. Tenacity goes over the wall. They're trying to keep Yuji out of this pit. Keep damage. Spyrex and Niles are also taking a massive amount of damage. Young gets in, but Yuji knocks him back. The interaction I was talking about. Equalizer over the top. Niles will Jerry go down to throw out the ultimate. Charm lands, Tenassi will live. Young goes godlike as Spyrax falls. It's all up to Scary Jerry, but he gets rooted in place. Double kill to Young. DSG made it work, and they will punish MU for positioning on the wrong side of the rift. Yeah, the guys are going for these front-to-back team fights, and they are working. Both Young and Manui on different sides, setting things up. And Maryville, they were so, so close. You get that first reset, suddenly the play becomes worthwhile. But Disguise is now getting the Baron buff. The Rally Cry Baron buff comes through, and that should be the tools to get them into the base of their opponents. And Disguise, all of that teamwork, charging into the game is coming through. Disguise mm -hmm. is so, so ready to find another win over Maryville in playoffs. We sang Maryville's praises throughout the regular season of how they position on the map. That was a clear blunder. DSG had all five members on the Baron, and now they're catching out Yuji, trying to clear out some jungle camps here. Cease and desist not available, but Tenacity's on the flank. Zyko's just running in to try and help Yuji. Niles teleported in, but That's Fate it. Seal will do just that. DSG catch out the support and the jungler. And that should be the game right there. Yuji taking away the red buff, taking away the scuttle crab, getting caught on the Hextech map. These gates are still here. These death timers are too long. These guys are ready to end it. Yeah, it's 34 seconds on Yuji, 20 seconds on Zyko, plus the six grubs the DSG got earlier on. Means that Grubageddon is in Whoa. full swing. They're not going to go for the game and push mid, though. Instead, they're going to spread out and delay the game a little longer. I agree with you, Josh. I think there's a clear world there. You have Cease and Desist and Pop Blossom and Dawning Shadow. You could just hard force the game end, but they're going to take it slow. It's all right. I mean, taking three inhibitors is about as close as you can get to her ending the game without actually ending the game. But now they do have to be a little bit careful. Watch the charms from Spire X. Yeah, they don't want to get hit by that one. Charm lands onto Young. Good damage. Chunks him down to below half. As the Super Mega Death Rocket oh. goes out. Oh, big damage. But he goes into stasis. Beats Spire X in. And Minui will claim the kill on the enemy mid laner. Good stuff. Great defensive play from Young. It's why he had to die single time. Bolts. Perry's looking. We still have season desist. We still have Pop Blossom. They can still look for the plays. Young will teleport onto the minion wave in the top lane and get onto these Nexus turrets. MU have a 4v5 defense, make it a 3v5 defense. DSG played it out patiently, and they are rewarded as they will fight MU under their Nexus turrets and win that fight. Striking first in this best of five. This guy's look fantastic in this game. Young, in particular, taking control of the game. They faded Spyrex into picking his R and said, no, 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 no. That's not going to work here. We got the Nico. We are actually the ones with the counter pick on this side. And it paid mm -hmm. off. He got so many ultimates. He didn't die during that last game. And that puts them up 1-0 in our best of five. Young had an incredible game one performance. Let's see if they can get back to back to back as this is a best of five. So you have a chance to clap back in this next one. We're going to send it to a short break while we give the players time to get ready for that game. We'll see you after this. They said it couldn't be done. They said the world would never accept a cookie this long.
or a churro, and probably not a pretzel either. They also said under no circumstances should those really long and delicious treats be wildly affordable. To which we said, but we already made them. And they are. Introducing the incredible new footlong sidekicks. Get one at Subway today. Hello and welcome everybody to the formerly known as Academy Awards. There's a lot of players to celebrate this year. So to kick things off, we have our first ever NACL All-Pro. Your winners for third team All-Pro are... From Maryville. And now they're taking the fight over here on the side. You, young jumping forward. Niles goes oh in. Hops in. Spyrax still alive as Sanasi was threatening him. Scary Jerry now joining, Niles? reinforcing Niles. Big Niles. engage from Maryville top laner will claim two as Spyrax gets the credit for the kills. Double kill over to the Azir and DSG in full retreat. As Maryville now start the Baron. It is back and forth. Time goes Time. in. Time. With the breath of life from Zyko though. The shutdown goes over to Sajed. Now back in. Shaden has to flash out. Sajed is going on Scary Jerry. And it's a beautiful Empress of Isaac. Oh. Completely wide while Shaden takes the Baron. And FlyQuest are off here. As Zyko getting a little bit... Frisky with Surdy there. Won't be able to get out too much longer. He does burn the flash out. Surdy's just left to his own devices. Shane's going back in. Q3 dodged out of. I don't think they can do this one. It's FlyQuest. They are fighting this one tooth and nail. Scary Jerry with the fight. Oh, wow. Again. He gets it, though. Romer is TPing mid, so this should be a pretty big shot class. And he goes. And he goes and spawn in the back line. Here comes Mama Ray. Comes down, able to hit. But it really doesn't oh. do much. A brilliant knock him comes through. And Supernova are lambs to the slaughter. A double kill going to be found by Ray. No spawn. He will grab it. Going forwards, Romer wants to bring down the hammer onto Faisal. One more. More blast will do it. Doesn't land on the backside. Faisal able to survive. Will he be able to tell the story of what he just witnessed? The slaughter that TLC committed. It's dredge lined. Now, can they get their damage dealers to output the damage array coming over on the flank? Array's just gonna pop everybody here. One kill, two kills. Oh. We go for the Penta. Oh Triple my god. Array. I see it in his sights. The man wants it. Will the team give it? Oh, the quadra kill. The bird was there. He's gonna chase it down. Boom, right, running away from it. Okay, how much time does he have? We're uh, gonna hunt it, for it. It's a while. Can he get the flight back? I don't know what the cooldown is. Oh, he does have it. He's gonna run under the turret. Oh, oh he's got, got it. Damage array has it. Penta kill to Supernova Array. And a Penta kill to Smolder for the ace in the game. I'm behind him. Yeah. 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 Nice. That's right, baby. Yeah. No, guys. We can. No, I think we had mid, and mid. 